This is an introduction to the Workspace Preview System, otherwise known as Lightning Preview. The Workspace Preview System is a set of modules, configuration, and code that allows users to create collections of content within the context of the live site and send that content through an editorial workflow. You can think of workspaces as containers of content which can be sent through a workflow and ultimately merged into one another. WPS comes bundled with the Lightning distribution. Uh, Lightning provides a Composer Scaffold project which is available on Packagist as Lightning Project under the Acquia namespace. You can quickly get a copy of the code base by running Composer Create Project Acquia Lightning Project. It's important to note that the Workspace Preview System is actually disabled by default. Um, this is because it's currently, as of January 2017, marked as experimental. So this isn't the first time that somebody has tried to solve these problems or create this functionality. Um, there was the site preview system and also the content preview system, both in Drupal 7. Um, some major differences between those and what the workspace preview system does is the workspace preview system allows you to make changes on the live site, which CPS did not allow. Um, it actually integrates directly with workbench moderation to transition workspaces from one state to another. Uh, in the future, that will be the content moderation module, which is now in core. Um, and it's based on a large suite of contrib modules. We're just adding some configuration and additional code on top of the contrib modules. So those contrib modules upon which Workspace Preview System is built include multi-version, replication, workspace, and workbench moderation. In the future, we'll also include the trash module. And we also have plans to migrate from workbench moderation to core content moderation. Um, all these should also play nicely with the deploy and relaxed web services modules. I mean, you would use something like that if, for example, you had an external site that you wanted to replicate to. And most of those modules are being worked on as part of the core workflow initiative, which has the goal to bring major improvements to Drupal's content workflow, preview, and staging capabilities. So big thanks to everyone working on that initiative. Workspaces are assigned a moderation state via the Workbench Moderation module. This is the same module and interface that Lightning uses to assign states to regular pieces of content, like nodes. Using the Workspace Preview system does not prevent you from sending arbitrary pieces of content, like nodes, through workflows in addition to workspaces. By default, WPS allows you to assign workspaces to three states, draft, needs review, and published. You might notice that Lightning ships with an additional state archive, which is not included in that list. That's because WPS allows you to select which states are available for workspaces from the superset of defined states. And this can be useful if you want to have a different set of states for individual pieces of content versus a different set of states for workspaces. Um, when workspaces are transitioned to the published state, a replication is triggered and all of its content is merged with the upstream workspace. So workspaces can be full copies of your live site, filtered versions of your live site, or completely empty. Um, by default, when you create a new workspace, it's empty, and clicking on the Update button from the Workspace toolbar will trigger a replication from upstream and bring all of the, the content that isn't affected by a filter into that workspace. Workspaces are content entities, so similar to nodes, workspaces can be created, edited, and deleted at admin structure workspaces. When creating a workspace, you can set the upstream, the parent workspace, and add filters. The upstream workspace is the workspace to which content is pushed when the workspace is published. This is usually set to the live workspace. Filters is a pluggable system that allows you to refine which pieces of content are replicated to and from the defined upstream. By default, WPS includes two workspaces, live and stage. Depending on your workflow, you might reuse the stage workspace again and again, or you might choose to create several workspaces. Once you've installed WPS, you'll see some additional items in your toolbar. These items allow you to switch between workspaces, create new workspaces, and update the current workspace. Updating a workspace pulls all changes from the upstream workspaces. Changes that are affected by a workspace filter are ignored. Now there are several scenarios that you might use Workspace Preview System for. One is what we call the World Series scenario, and that's where you have two possible outcomes of an event that's about to happen, and you want to have all of your associated content ready, 
uh, depending on the actual outcome of that event. In that case, you would have two workspaces outside of live, one for outcome A and one for outcome B. And both of them could have already been sent through a workflow and ready to publish when the event actually happens. Another example is something like a product launch where you have lots and lots of changes to your site in maybe a single or possibly chained workspaces. And when the actual event happens, your content has already been previewed and approved in relationship to everything else. And one other example that's a, a little bit harder to define but I think comes up a lot is the example of multimedia stories. And that's where you have something like a blog post or some seemingly simple piece of content um, that you don't want to publish, but in the act of creating that piece of unpublished content, you end up creating other entities that are associated with it that are by default published. So I'm going to show a quick demo of the third uh, multimedia story um, where we go through the workflow of creating a piece of content that we want to save as draft and demonstrate that the associated media with that content is actually published on your site unintentionally. Then we're going to show how, that exact same workflow but using the workspace preview system. So here we have a really simple site set up. Um, we have a view on the home page here that shows all published content and the teaser uh, display from those pieces of content. And then we have another view over here that shows all images of type media. So we have a media entity defined um, and a bundle inside that media entity called image and all published images are shown here. So I'm going to quickly create uh, just a simple basic page and I'm going to call this basic page squid and I'm going to leave the moderation state set to draft. Inside of the body of this basic page called squid I'm going to create a media entity which is an image of a squid. And I'm going to embed that in my content. And just to keep my home page view clean, I'm going to split the summary and just have squid for the summary. And remember that I've left this unpublished. Uh, it's in draft state. So I'm going to save this. And if I come to my published content view, I see that the squid is not listed. That's exactly what we want because we didn't publish it, so that's great. Where this kind of falls short is if I come to my images view and now I see the image of the squid even though its parent entity, that's the squid node, isn't published and I don't want to see that here. So let's just quickly go ahead and publish that content so we know where everything's at. We'll come to content squid and we'll change this to published. So now under published content we should see fox and squid and we should also see both images on our image gallery. So now let's do the exact same thing but this time we'll do all of our work in the stage workspace. So I'm switching to the stage workspace. I'm going to update the stage workspace so that we get all of the content from live. And now that we've updated, I see the squid node and the squid image here. So now I'm just going to create a third node. And I'm going to call this zebra. And just like the others, I'm going to include an image, which will create an associated media entity. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and publish, because in this case, we're not so much worried about the moderation state of the individual entity so much as we are about the moderation state of the workspace in which it lives. So under the publish content, I see the zebra node, and in my image gallery, I see the fox, the squid, and the image. But what live users see, uh, what anonymous users see rather, is over in the live workspace. In the live workspace, I only see squid and fox, I don't see the zebra, and in the image tab, 
I still only see the squid and the fox. I don't see the zebra. And that's because we haven't published the stage workspace. So in this example, we'll pretend like the stage workspace has been reviewed and it's ready to publish. So I can come to structure, workspaces, and I'm going to edit the stage workspace. And I'm going to set the moderation state to published. And save. And here we see that the workspace stage has been updated and changes were pushed to live. So if I go back to my site, now I'm on the live workspace. And on the image gallery, I now see all three images. And under the publish content tab, I see zebra, squid, and fox. So this is just a demonstration on how the workspace preview system, aka lightning preview, um, can kind of help with a common publishing workflow problem that people have with associated entities being published as live, even though the parent entity hasn't been published. I also want to talk about how Workspace Preview System lacks certain entities. First, content entities. And content entities are things like nodes and taxonomy terms. When we introduce the idea of states and transitions to workspaces, that's stuff like needs review and published, we realized that we needed to define what exactly a published workspace was. And to us, a published workspace meant that all the content that wasn't affected by a filter in that workspace had been merged to the upstream or live workspace. And once that happened, we felt like you shouldn't uh, be able to edit content on those workspaces. So we introduced the concept of locked states, published being one of them. So if you imagine a state called something like ready to publish that was set to locked, if you were viewing a workspace that was in that state, you can know for sure that none of the content has been modified since it was moved to that state, nor will it be modified while it remains in that state. We also decided that there were certain situations where we needed to lock configuration entities, and configuration entities are stuff like the site's name uh, or a view. So, of course, in Drupal 8, configuration entities are handled by configuration management, but in the rare case that somebody was editing a configuration on the site, we wanted to, um, we didn't want any surprises where somebody thought that it would only affect, for example, the stage workspace because indeed configuration entities are not revisionable um, and as a result, they're not unique to workspaces. So if you were to edit a configuration entity on the stage workspace, it would definitely affect the live site. So just to make sure there were no surprises, WPS locks config entities from being edited entirely unless the user is on the live workspace. So as far as our roadmap goes, um, the Lightning uh, Workspace Preview System is currently marked as experimental, and you can check out lightning.aqua.com for a little bit more information on that. Uh, we do have plans to migrate to content moderation, and that's for all of Lightning, uh, not just for the Workspace Preview System. But that probably won't happen until uh, Drupal Core 8.4.x is released in the fall of 2017. So as always, you can check out lightning.aqui.com for more information, and thanks a lot. Hope to see you soon.